Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Lisa Filion and I'm an artist and art teacher from Ontario, Canada. And joining me today is Nano because we are going to be drawing a dog today. Yay, right Nano? We're gonna be drawing um, Handsome Mick, um, which is a source picture that I found on the Sketchy app. So the reason why I chose it is because it already has this really cool filter applied to it in a complementary color scheme. So um, we're gonna kind of work in that complementary scheme today and use some crazy colors to draw Handsome Mick. So I'm super excited about that. And all this month, every Wednesday, we're going to be doing a live drawing here using Procreate. And for the rest of the month, we're gonna be drawing humans, but to start us off, we're gonna draw a dog. So um, thanks, Nano, he's very excited about it. So uh, I'm gonna put Nano down because he's not a huge fan of my tripod for some reason. It's not his favorite thing. So we'll let him kind of chill out. And I'll show you guys the, the picture we're gonna be working with. So, we're going to be drawing this beautiful picture here of handsome Mick, who is just looking so regal there. I love it. And uh, we are going to, of course, be using a complimentary color scheme. And this is to kind of celebrate also this month. My class has launched on Monday um, called Color Fun. Or, and uh, it's all about using color in really kind of bold, vibrant ways um, in your portraits and then throwing in a little bit of color theory in there as well in the lessons. So the first lesson just launched on Monday and this is the live draw. Some people have already had a chance to um, draw their lesson. So um, I've enjoyed seeing people's interpretation of of the lesson so far, and you can still sign up. So if you haven't signed up already, you can sign up anytime. Even if you plan on doing the class down the road, it doesn't matter, you don't have to follow along live with us. Those classes are available for you at any time. So just so you guys know, you can still sign up for the Color Fun class with me. So hi everyone, I see a bunch of people saying hi. Um, Nano says hi to all you guys. <laughs> And yeah, I'm really excited to draw a handsome mix. So I'm gonna just scroll over here to make that source picture a little bit smaller. And we're going to open a new canvas. And a lot of people ask me what my preferred canvas size is. And I have a bunch of presets that I made. And you can make a preset by clicking on um, the little plus button at the top that looks like a folder. Make sure your canvas is always set to 300 DPI or higher because if you want to print your artwork down the road, um, it's a good print resolution. So anything 300 and higher is good to go. And I'm choosing an 11 by 14 canvas. It's my favorite kind of go-to sketchbook size of canvas unless I'm doing something really special that needs to be blown up much larger. So we are drawing this beautiful little guy here. I'm just gonna make my canvas roughly the size of my picture. And I've already started a palette um, that we can start using here. Um, so I have a ton of different palettes as you guys can see. And we're gonna use this complementary color palette. And I started just adding some yellows and purples to the palette because the main complementary scheme that, scheme that we're looking at here is yellow and purple. And for those of you who are new to color theory, um, if you look at a color wheel, complementary colors are the opposites on the color wheel. So what is on the other side from that color. So if you look at the opposite of yellow, you get purple or vice versa. So these are colors that, that complement each other, that look good together and can really kind of make each other kind of stand out and pop. So this one already came pre-filtered for us to use. Um, and it's kind of a cool challenge to, to work on a dog that is not a traditional color, right? So most of Mick's um, highlights and um, shadows are actually different shades of purple. So I'm gonna use a really dark purple to start with instead of using black. And I'm just going to go to one of my favorite pencils, which is the peppermint pencil that comes in Procreate and click on that. 
And we're going to start out just by doing a really rough kind of sketched outline of his features. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just looking at kind of the basic geometry of Mick here. So you can think of him as having like a little circle for the skull and then he's got some, I guess I should say he or she, I'm not really sure if Mick is a boy or a girl, um, but he's he or she is handsome. I'm going to guess a boy maybe because of the name Mick, but I don't know. And I'm just kind of mapping out the basic shape of the dog. Really, really rough, right? So this is a more gestural technique. And in the class, the color fun class that's currently happening in the month of August here, I kind of approach all the portraits in the class in a different way so that you guys can um, decide what works for you. So this is a gestural looser technique way of approaching a portrait, whereas in some of the lessons I'll break it down into kind of a more structured kind of way. So I like this especially for like a little bit more abstract work or also just as a warm up so you don't have to feel like um, you have to get everything so precise and perfect right away, but instead it just gives you some freedom to be able to kind of, again, like warm up before starting doing any of your big shading or drawing. So it mix kind of cut off here, um, but I like the composition of this because we are definitely going to include in some of that crazy fabric, which is amazing. And I'm going to just make that snout a little bit of a different angle. So you can feel free even with this gestural technique to go in with an eraser if you just want to, you know, fix things up. And then I'm just going to kind of suggest the fuzz of the blanket a little bit. That's kind of crazy here. And I was really drawn to this picture. I was just scrolling through the sketchy app, kind of looking for inspiration one day. And actually, normally I don't tend to pick pictures that have lots of filters applied to them. I tend to pick more kind of natural um, photography as inspiration. But with this color fun class and like how amazing this portrait was, and it's a dog and it sees like wild, really saturated colors, I thought it would be really perfect for today's little YouTube demonstration. Okay, so now that I have a really rough portrait here going on, um, what I want to do now is obviously work more on the details. So I'm just going to call this gesture to know that it's my gesture sketch. And I'm going to reduce the opacity by clicking on that little N. I'm going to reduce that opacity right down. And I know you guys can't see it very well, but either can I actually. And then I'm going to make another layer on top, which I'll actually call sketch. And this is a little trick that I've been showing in my classes lately of like doing multiple sketch layers. So don't feel that you have to nail those proportions the first time on the very first sketch layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, just kind of line these up so roughly the scale is the same. And on my new sketch layer, I'm going to now not be quite as loose in my approach to the drawing, but instead go in and sketch out the details of the eye. And I love drawing animals, um, especially dogs, because I'm a huge dog lover. And Actually, most of the commission work that I do is usually dogs or cats. So they're one of my favorite subjects to draw. And 
And if any of you guys are looking for more Procreate courses too, there's tons of classes available in the Sketchy Shop. And a class that I recorded a while ago um, was actually drawing animals in Procreate. So if you guys are more interested in um, after you've done your color fun class, if you're interested in kind of continuing on with some classes, I would really recommend that class, especially if you're an animal lover. Um, it was a really fun class to do too, because I, uh, every lesson I did a different type of animal. So we did a dog, a cat, a lizard, and a bird. Um, and so kind of learned about all the different textures involved. So I'm, I'm using kind of little almost cross hatchy lines um, just to create kind of the shading of this fur to, to make this this little eye very expressive. Dogs often have very like vulnerable looking expressions. Look how cute mix eyes are here, right? So we gotta make him look super cute just like his photo. And I also am going to just spend the time doing that little bit of cross hatching so that I'm able to suggest the fur and also where the shadows and highlights are. So I really love um, bold, bright colors. And I, I, I try to kind of encourage my students to not be afraid of color. Um, and to use color really freely. So that's what this new class is all about. The color fun class is drawing and procreate, yes. Drawing portraits, yes. <laughs> but also experimenting with color schemes. Um, so it's a lot packed into one class. And I hope you guys that are already in the class are enjoying it so far. Or those of you that are thinking about signing up, I hope that I'll see you in the class soon one day because... Um, it was a lot of fun to to record those lessons. Okay, so I'm trying to get kind of the shape of Mick's nose here. I'm going to do the little shape of his mouth. And also I should mention to you guys, I get kind of suckered into to drawing and then I forget to look at the comments, but I really want to answer questions. So if you guys have specific questions about the, the new class or, you know, drawing portraits or, or anything procreate related, um, please feel free to ask and I will try to look up every once in a while and uh, answer your questions. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of looking at, I can already see that I made my eye too big. So I'm going to show you guys a cool trick. Um, so if this happens to you and you're drawing along and, and you've done like a detailed jo job on something and you don't really want to make it smaller um, by drawing it all over again, one really cool thing about using Procreate is you can use the selection tool, which looks like a little ribbon, an S, and you can select, make sure you're on freehand first, sorry. So on freehand, you can select the area that you want to cut out you can go to your transform tool and then you can drag it and make it bigger or smaller and then move it around the canvas. So a little bit of a trick for something you can do um, with digital art that is not so easy to do in traditional art. In traditional art, I would have just had to erase that, right? And start over or make the snout larger or whatever. So kind of some cool little tricks you can do in Procreate to help adjust proportion. And in the class, I show you guys all of my, my little tips and tricks for portraiture and using the tools in Procreate. Okay, so we're gonna try to capture this ear shape. And again, um, this is going to be the, the picture itself. The photo itself is already somewhat abstracted just because of the filter that's applied to it. Um, and we're going to also go a little bit of abstract today. And I actually love doing that with animal portraits and any portrait is just kind of combined realistic and abstract elements together. Usually I try to make the proportions be the somewhat realistic part and then 
um, the abstract part is usually a, a lot done through color. Okay, and then we'll just go over the collar a little bit. I didn't draw in the circle before, but maybe I'll just kind of put it in quickly here. Not exactly like the picture, I just kind of did my own little interpretation there. And now that I'm drawing him, I have to say Mick is a very handsome guy. Okay. And again, we can just, you know, suggest the fur just so I know where it's kind of cutting off from the body. I think the paw is going to show up a little bit there. Something like that. And I like to zoom in and out a bit, um, just so I can kind of see the proportion a little bit better. And I'll just kind of fix things up that I'm not happy with. And I'm, I'm working really zoomed out, but I feel that it helps me to be able to see a little bit better from far away. And also I'm just kind of using lines and shapes to kind of right now block in where my shading is going to be. Okay, so I have a decent sketch to start with. So now we're going to actually get to the color fun. I love doing, for any of you guys who have seen any of my videos before, I love doing a color underlayer and a color overlayer, or you could call it base layer, um, which would probably be a, a better term for it. And I'm going to use my favorite painting brush, which is a gouache brush. And I'm just going to grab like a, a medium purple on my scale here. Actually, I might choose one step lighter. And I'm going to move my gouache brush up to 100%. And it's already kind of a see-through brush, so you might have to go over it a few times to get it completely opaque. And I'm just going to color in the area that is the dog in purple right away and I like doing this for a base layer because if you decide to add a background color at any point in your portrait if you make this opaque enough so see how I'm going over it again because the gouache brush isn't completely opaque um, if you make it opaque enough then what's going to happen is you won't be able to see the background through now, sometimes you might want to actually see the background through, and that might be an artistic choice that you make. So at that point, you might want to have, you know, parts of it be a little less opaque. So we'll just kind of leave it there um, just to do really, really quickly. And then I probably will grab a yellow. And again, just really quickly, I'm just going to kind of block in I keep wanting to zoom out, but block in exactly where that yellow is kind of going to be. And then we'll have to make some decisions because I'm not going to include everything that's in this background. So what I thought we could do is if we go to the background color right now, I could choose a really pale purple. And actually I might go even a little bit into the pinks because we have some pink that we're going to add later on. Um, I'm going to make that the background color. And then so you can already see that background color any place that I didn't make it super opaque, it shows through. So that could be something kind of cool that you want to experiment with. And, um, and sometimes, uh, and then sometimes you can do something else. Sorry, I was distracted because I was looking at comments. So Betty asks, um, what brush do you find the best for doing initial sketches? I, I personally am a pencil kind of girl, so I have done um, artworks in the past where I kind of build it up with paintbrushes instead, but I would say my go-to is a pencil. So I really like either the HB pencil or the peppermint pencil. Those are kind of my favorite ones in Procreate. 
Um, another question from Porcupine Pancake is, do you find the Apple Pencil works just like a regular one? Easier to use, harder? I love my Apple Pencil. I mean, it sounds like I'm, um, you know, an affiliate of Apple in some way, but I'm not. <laughs> I just, I love it. When it first came out, I was so excited and I just started using it right away. And to me, it felt super intuitive um, because it's got touch sensitivity and tilt. Um, you can do anything with it that you can with any other regular materials. I think the biggest learning curve is not using the pencil itself, but actually learning um, almost the tension of, of drawing on a screen versus drawing on paper. Because when you're drawing on paper, you have some friction. When you're drawing on a glossy surface like glass, um, it's it slides a lot more. I still think there's some friction though because the tip of the pencil is um, rubberized a bit. So. To me, it's never been an issue, but I know some people like to put on um, kind of paper-like screen protectors on there um, to kind of give that more friction to make it feel more normal. But the Apple Pencil is amazing. I uh, honestly would super recommend it and never go back to anything else for sure. So I'm going to do a color overlayer now. Just call it color. And I'll keep kind of scrolling through, see if you guys have any more questions. So keep asking questions. Um, so Janice asks, do you use a screen protector to make it feel more like paper? Yeah, so I don't. I, I like the glass screen, but I know a lot of people um, really like... Oh, I, I forget what the name of the screen protector is. It's it's something like paper-like. It has paper in the name. I know a lot of artists have recommended it on YouTube where I've, I've looked at reviews of it. Um, if you just search paper screen protector um, iPad, I'm sure that it'll come up. And uh, yeah, there is, there is a product out there. I can't say whether it's good or not, though, because I haven't used it myself. Okay, so now in this color overlayer, I like to start with the eyes. Um, so... I want to include some natural color. So I want to have a little bit of brown in there. Whoops, that's really big. I'm still using the gouache brush. So I'm going to start by just laying down some brown. And then instead of white, I'm going to use that pink background color for the whites of the eyes. And it's actually probably going to read as white, even though it's technically not can use that even for this part here. And then I will use my really dark purple and maybe make it even darker, almost black, to do the darks of the eyes. And remember, animal eyes are different than human eyes. Um, generally speaking, dog eyes will have a lot less visible white space. Um, so they, they have a, a bigger iris I guess it fills more of their eye cavity so that's something to keep in mind um, handsome Mick here is looking sideways so it's a profile picture so we do not have to deal with two eyes we only have to deal with one I think I have a trend going on now last week I also picked a portrait with only one eye it's my trick for you guys then you only have to do one eye right um so yeah I don't know, maybe, maybe next week we'll have a two-eyed portrait. But I really liked the profile view of this one here. And I like to also shade around the eye as I'm shading the eye itself. So it's, it's a back and forth kind of motion. And I'm picking up for those people that are kind of new to Procreate, you can color drop by picking up colors this way. So if you find like a really nice color, so let's say I really like that purpley gray color, you can go into your palette and you can tap and add it anywhere into your palette. So that's how you would add new colors to a palette. And we go over making color palettes in the new class. And of course that's... Um, an important part of the new class is choosing your color palette. And in the class too, I want to mention to you guys that it, it also teaches you how to take portraits that, you know, don't have filters 
and how you can embellish and add more color into skin tones and things like that. So even if your source itself doesn't contain a lot of color, um, you wanna think about how you as an artist can interpret that source image and include more color into your portrait. Okay, so I'm just trying to do the tear duct here. And I need to take my own advice and not make that white space so noticeable. And then I'm grabbing a bit more of the brown and just smearing it. Now, so far, I haven't used the smudge tool. One reason why I really like the gouache brush is the ability to blend without using the smudge tool because sometimes if you overuse the smudge tool, it can just get a little bit soft on you, a little too digital looking in my opinion. So um, this is a way of kind of preventing that. And if you look closely at the eye here, we can't zoom in too much further, but um, it actually has a lot more color in it. So I like to add, you know, a little bit of blue, like a bright blue into the shine in the eye. And I do this for a lot of portraits. Sometimes I use, you know, purple or any cool color. Um, teal looks really good too. Maybe we'll add a little bit of teal. And I'm going to reduce my opacity a bit. And I'm just continuing to kind of shade around. And we'll come back to the eye in a second, but I just want to keep shading. Um, so if you guys are following along at home, you can keep using the gouache brush, but I'm going to switch over to my own gouache pack right now. If you are interested, it's available in my Etsy shop, which is Pixel Princess Art. And basically, because I love Procreate's gouache brush so much, um, I made my own set of five, which just has a few different properties to it that I like using for my portrait. So I'm going to use my actually my gouache flat brush right now um, because I just kind of want that brush texture. So there we go. It has a nice flat, broad brush stroke. Instead of being rounded, it's flat, like its name suggests. And I'm just gonna use that to start adding in some shadows. So I've switched to a really dark purple. It's kind of a feathery brush, similar to Procreate's gouache brush in texture, but different in um, kind of the way it applies the paint and the, the shape of it. Okay, so cheekbone, the ears are dark, the snout is dark, and of course the tip of the nose. And I can already see where I've made a mistake. I would definitely bring that collar up higher. Um, so I'm just going to pretend it's higher <laughs> and we'll fix that later. And then this isn't quite as dark over here, but I'm just going to kind of put some areas in like that. And then I want to get more to the, the pinks because there's kind of a glow effect with the pink here. So I'm going to grab some more Let's see, some like darker pinks. It's like a pinky purple, magenta kind of color. I think it's more like that. I'm gonna delete this one. Those pinks are very similar to each other, I know. Let's just grab a few pinks here. Um, 
And I'm just going to do a light wash over the entire portrait with this pink. or almost the entire portrait, definitely the body because it has the most in it. And I'm going to go in with a medium purple and also do a little bit of a wash over certain areas. Like so. And then I'm going to take that background color and use it for the highlights. I feel like there's something really relaxing about drawing animals for me. Do you guys feel like that? Do any of you guys out there love drawing animals? Okay, just a little bit more. So this is really rough, right? It's all kind of um, blended in. I'm gonna look at comments here. Um, Oh, thanks, Jenny. Jenny says she likes my gouache brushes. Yay! I worked really hard on my brushes. Um, I don't put anything in my shop that I haven't used extensively myself because that would be embarrassing if you guys didn't like them. Um, so thanks, Jenny. I'm glad you like them. And Porcupine Pancake says, will your newest class still be available to purchase in, say, a couple of months? Yes, it is still going to be up on the Sketchy Shop. All of my old classes are up there as well. So that's what's really cool about the Sketchy Art School is that you can work at your own pace. You can even purchase a class now and then, you know, six months from now, start it. So really, you don't have to um, you don't have to be working live as we go. Um, and all of this stuff will be available to you at all times. So you can always go back and look at any of these YouTube videos or any of the videos in the lesson. So yay, Betty just signed up for my animal class. Yay, I love that class. I'm so excited to see um, the animals that you guys make. And a question about where to find my brushes on my Etsy shop. So my Etsy shop is Pixel Princess Art, all one word. Um, and yeah, the logo looks like this. So if you're looking for the shop, it looks like that. And uh, yeah, all my brushes are there. Okay, we're gonna go and make a collar now. And at this phase, I kind of like doing this. It's kind of in the browns too. So I'm gonna take a dark purple, but then just move my value. Um, this is kind of a trick for you guys too. Like let's say you, you want a dark purple color to start with. So you want something still with that intensity or that shadow range, but you want to move it warmer. Well, on your color wheel, you can just move it more towards the warmth of, let's say, red, and then you're going to get something that's a little bit more into the browns, which is what I want for the collar. Um, and I can also, of course, shift on my color wheel and mute it a little bit more if I wanted it to be more in the grays. So I'm going to switch over to my soft gouache brush. And what I'm going to do is put in the collar. And the reason for that is twofold because I want the collar to be over top of the painting I'm doing. And I'm getting to the point in the painting where I'm not going to be able to see my sketch anymore. And then also, remember how I said I didn't quite draw the collar in the right spot? I have to make it a little bit higher on the portrait. So if I do that now, it maybe avoids some problems down the road. So I'm gonna go in. I actually love the color that I got from not having my gouache brush be completely opaque. So I actually, you guys saw me color grab a second ago. So I color grabbed that color. And if you can look closely, it's a really cool color. So it's got a, a little bit of a brown maroon to it, but it's more muted. So that's perfect for what I want for the collar. And I'm just gonna shade it. And again, I'm using my own 
custom brush set and this is the this gouache soft brush but don't feel that you need that um, of course you can use procreate's gouache brush and get really similar results okay um, so something like that and then I'm going to take my eraser and let's see, my eraser right now is on script. I'm going to change it over to just um, Procreate Squash. Make that smaller. And I'm going to just trim it. So use the eraser to again kind of make that collar the right scale and angle. So maybe something like that. And then obviously I'm not finished with the color, but it's above, it's on its own layer. So I'm gonna go back to my color layer and then I can continue shading the dog. So now it's just, it's provided me like an anchor point on the neck to be able to better see some of this shading. So I'm using a muted purple right now. And then I'll just kind of build that value. And then because this is darker, I'm just going to tone it down a little bit by going over the whole thing in this darker gray color. And at this point too, if you want to get rid of your sketch, um, another thing you can do is you can uncheck your sketch layers. So it depends really what you want. If you if you want that sketch to be visible or not, because there's different approaches to what kind of style you want. But you can at this point um, uncheck the sketch, and then you can really see where you need to focus on for your value. And I am now going to switch over to my gouache fine tip brush, which is basically the gouache brush condensed down into a tiny, almost pencil-like tip. Um, and the reason why I made this brush was because I was sick of constantly not being able to get the texture I wanted in a small size brush. So this is a gouache texture, but you know, almost like a pencil form. So I call it the fine tip. And this is where I'm going to do hatching, which is lines that are placed next to each other in succession like this, um, in order to suggest the fur and the shading. So I'm really gonna focus in on the eyes again, come back to those, and maybe get a little bit more value going on here. So in these parts where they're the darkest, I'm just going to exaggerate the value of that, make it a little darker than it even is in the picture, because I really want those beautiful eyes of mix to stand out. And in the animal class too, that I was mentioning before, that's on in the sketchy shop, um, we also talk a lot about the eyes of the animals and how to, to draw the eyes and how to render them. And one tip that I have for you guys too, when you're first starting out, you might even wanna do the eyes on a separate layer. Um, that can sometimes be helpful to really isolate your layers in that way. And then if you want to merge layers later on, you can always do that. Okay, I'm really zoomed in so you can see it's kind of pixelated there, but I really want to get that eye beautiful. I'm making my brush quite large now so that I can keep going with this shading and just cover more surface area a little bit quicker.
And with the Apple Pencil too, I can apply more or less pressure in my brush strokes, so I don't have to constantly change the opacity necessarily. You can just find like a comfortable place to put your opacity and then you can vary the brush strokes yourself by how much pressure you apply. I'm gonna change my brush strokes to this direction because I wanna get to the nose because it's pretty unfinished at this point. And I also want to, at this point, go around and clean up the face shape a little bit. So that might actually be on the color under layer at this point. So some of it we have to go on another layer. If that gets annoying for you guys too, to try to figure out which layer you're on, you can always merge your two color layers at this point. There's no real reason to keep them separate. So that's up to you. Okay. So I'm going to even go into a little bit of the blue purples right now for the snout. Maybe even more into the blue blues too. Still using the gouache fine tip brush that I made. Again, you could have, you could use the peppermint pencil for this step if you're following along, or you could use Procreate's gouache brush um, on a really fine setting. So I'm just kind of going over some lines adding some blue in. So even though this is a complementary color scheme, there's no rule against us not incorporating in other colors, right? So, you know, it's going to primarily be the yellow and purple, but we're definitely incorporating a whole bunch of other colors in here as well. Again, I'm just constantly kind of making, going back to the eyes when I notice something, just to make them really stand out. And I wanna get the mouth correct too. Handsome Mick has these handsome little lips here, so we gotta capture that. I'm gonna grab some a whiter shade to kind of do the little mustache hairs. Hopefully you guys can see. It looks kind of crazy. I find the biggest kind of tip I can say to a lot of people is not to get discouraged at this stage of drawing, whether you're drawing an animal or human or anything, um, because for a lack of a better word, this is the ugly stage. This is the um, stage where you're just laying down a foundation for what's to come. So, I mean, you can't judge your portrait by what it looks like at this particular stage. So if I zoom out, right, still kind of crazy looking, but you can start to see the dog hopefully come together here. Again, I'm going to just go into a bit more of the blues. And I'm just doing some hatching here. And I want to uh, do like a blue gray for the nose. So I'm going to go to my, actually, you know what, I'll go back to Procreate's gouache brush which can be found under painting if you're looking for it. 
and I'm going to use that to kind of color in and go over some of this patching that I've done and it just helps to like blend it in a little bit more, make it look a bit more natural. Don't worry, handsome Mick, I'm going to make you look beautiful, I promise. Okay, I just love saying handsome Mick. I'm sorry, I've said that name like a thousand times. Just so you guys know too, that's not actually the the name of the, the source picture. It's the caption of the picture. So Sketchy will post a link to the actual um, source. So just so you guys know, if you're searching handsome Mick, it probably won't come up in Sketchy. Maybe it will, maybe if they made it a hashtag, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm just kind of, I'm starting to blend while I am doing that. I'm gonna just look at what you guys are saying. Um, a lot of highs, hi. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I really appreciate it. Gunhild says, I love drawing animals too, and it is more relaxing, easier shapes, and you don't have to worry so much about likeness. Yeah, I agree. And it's funny too, because I feel like when I've done commissions like I do a lot of portrait commissions in general and when I do them of people people are a lot more critical of themselves than they are of rendering your ant your animals so people will want you to make their portrait more flattering but with animals it's always like no matter what you do they love it I I don't know it's hard to describe I think it's just we're so hard on ourselves as humans and then with animals we just we love them so much and and whatever an artist's interpretation is of that animal um it tends to be loved as well so yeah I always find it an honor when people ask me to paint their animals yay Mary Ann signed up for the animal class yay you can also sign up for the color class too <laughs> So Costa Musha, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, um, asked, uh, they said they signed up for this class and one for beginners. Uh, will you walk us through how to create a custom brush at some point? Um, it depends which class you've signed up for. I, I do teach um, in a couple of my classes, a couple of short lessons on making your own brushes. So in the mastering media class, there is a section where I teach you guys how to make a watercolor stamp, um, which is something that was actually my first foray into brush making. So mastering media, that class teaches you how. And then there's other classes, which off the top of my head, because I've done a few of them, I can't remember exactly which ones, but I've taught people how to do like simple little signature um, brushes and things like that. So maybe we can do something simple. I don't have a plan for it today, but maybe we can do something simple in a future YouTube or maybe even a future sketchy class dedicated to brush making would be really cool actually, um, if that's something people are interested in. Um, so, But Mastering Media definitely has a whole section on how to make brushes. Um, Jenny asks, what hashtag do you want us to use for the color fun class? Um, you can use the portraits in procreate, um, hashtag, which is already in existence, but maybe sketchy has a suggestion. Maybe they can chime in there. Probably color fun would be a good hashtag. Um, but yeah, I'll let sketchy answer that one for sure. Um, a good question by Costumusha. Sorry again if I'm saying it wrong. Can you resize or reposition your drawing if you use more than one layer? And if possible, how? Ooh, very good question. Okay, so I'll show you guys that right now. Um, what you're looking for is called um, layer groups or combined layers instead of merging layers. So I have um, a bunch of layers right now that are not being used and ones that are. So the ones that aren't being used, the sketch layers, I'm just gonna drag them below just for the sake of this. So to merge layers, you would tap on this and you would click merge down. 
um, but then you would never get your layers back. So what you want to do is you want to click on combine down and it creates a new layer group. And then you can click again on any of these layers and go combine, whoops, sorry, hold on. On the group itself, click combine down. And then that it pulls that other third layer in. You can also drag and drop, but sometimes I find that can be finicky. So this is just an easier way for me to do it. And now that this is called a, a whole layer group, you can even condense it. So this is really good for when you're doing more complicated um, portraits and you have you know, 20, 30, 40 layers. This is a way of organizing layers as well. But the cool thing about this is if I want to, and I might do that because I have a lot of negative space on this portrait right now. If I want to reduce that negative space, I can go to my transform tool here and I can um, just pinch, zoom in and out. I can move it around. I could multiply this and make it into a cute little wallpaper stamp. Um, so tons of, of flexibility that you can do. So if I wanted to, for example, maybe make it a little bigger, something like that, we could do that. And now we've instantly kind of adjusted that composition. So hopefully that was helpful. Janice says your ugly stage often looks better than mine. No, Janice, that's not true. Um, no, we all have our ugly stages. That's okay. And so keep asking questions, guys. Um, also, Sketchy has a discount code in comments I just saw. If you guys use the code artsy 20 you get 20% off any two plus classes in the sketchy shop. So for those of you who want to sign up for the animal class and the color fun class or mastering media where you can create your own brushes, um, sketchy has been so kind to offer you guys that coupon code. So that's really cool. Okay. I'm going to keep drawing and I will look at the comments again in a second. Um, so I'm going to, for sake of time, show you guys another trick I use for fur. So I've shown you that you can use hatching, you can use a pencil to create some fur effects. If you wanna kind of speed things up and be a little bit more loose, I really love this turpentine brush, which you can find under painting. It's actually right above the gouache brush, I believe. Hopefully I haven't changed my brush library around. And what you can do with this brush is make sure your layers are open, first of all. Um, you can adjust obviously the size and the opacity, but I wanna show you just the texture it creates. This is a really good one for animal fur. Even though it's like a painterly texture, I feel like it's the perfect brush for creating that right kind of texture for animal fur. Um, and I've used it, what's really cool about this too, is I've used it for both short haired as well as long haired animals. So you obviously would just make your brushes longer um, for a long haired dog or cat, right? So here's how you'll use it. You are just going to constantly kind of look at the, the direction the fur is flowing, first of all. Adjust your opacity to a point where you're happy with it. And then go back and forth between a few different colors that you have put down. So you want to, again, create shading as you do this. So I'm grabbing some surrounding colors. And we're using the Mick portrait. I think I should kind of clarify this too. Even though this portrait is already in beautiful colors with this filter, still it's just our source photo. It doesn't mean it has to be exactly like the photo. Um, so that's something that I, I like to express to all of my students is that, um, I mean, of course there's a place for photo realism, but I think that developing kind of your own style and, and being a little bit more free can probably produce better results than just trying to mimic a photograph. Because I mean, a photograph is the best at being what it is, a photograph. So you have to be the best at what medium you're using, right? And in this case, if it's a digital painting, um, what can I do with digital paint that the photograph can't do? And I kind of think like this texture that I'm creating right now is maybe one of those things that, um, is going to make my artwork stand out and makes it different than the photograph. 
So it just blends beautifully together, this brush too. It's also a lot faster if you don't have the patience for a lot of hatching and cross hatching, which I mean, sometimes I have the patience for that. And then other times I'm like, nope, that's just not gonna happen today. I'm gonna use this giant brush. Okay. feel like we're slowly moving away from the ugly stage <laughs> now that you guys know I call it that um yeah we're I'm feeling happier with the direction of the portrait right now so it's like always a nice feeling when you get to that little bit of a turning point where you're like oh this isn't so bad it's going okay so if you can just persevere and get to that point And also just have fun along the way, right? If you want to show more texture, make your brush smaller. I definitely have to fix these ears up up here. And this nose too is a bit disastrous right now. So we're going to fix this up. And I'm actually going to go back to the gouache brush to do that because I want it nice and smooth. And this is probably a decent time to start using the smudge tool a little bit on the nose. Oh my gosh, it makes, look at that, it looks like he has teeth. Do you guys see that? I didn't mean to do that, but it's kind of cute. There's a dog I follow on Instagram called Tuna. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys might follow him. He's pretty famous. And he's got these like teeth that stick out. It's so cute. Kind of reminds me of tuna. So since handsome Mick doesn't, I think, have teeth like that, we're going to try to make that look a little less like teeth. <laughs> even though it was pretty cute. And I wanna go back to, just because it's what I'm used to, my gouache fine tip brush. I wanna go back to that for the fur around the mouth. It's funny how you get used to using a certain brush, right? Everybody has their favorite go-to or at least once once you've been drawing in Procreate for a while, I think you develop those favorites. So I try to in the, the new Color Fun class, um, use a lot of different brushes. Um, some of them I'm kind of experimenting with in the class too, and, and kind of working with you to just kind of have fun and experiment with new things and um, not worried about perfection, but worried I shouldn't say worried, but just exploring color and, and having a lot of fun, which is, I guess, why fun is in the name, right, guys? Because we're just going to have fun with color. So just kind of outlining the bottom of mix muzzle a little bit here and a little bit of a neck wrinkle here. And then I want to grab that really bright, like, teal blue again because that's a cool effect to kind of add in. I'm just going to go really crazy with it and just make it even more bold. So, I mean, this started out as a um, complementary color scheme, which it still is going to be with the, with the yellow. But the dog itself is turning into, I would say, as time goes on here, an analogous color scheme, which we're going to talk about 
in an upcoming lesson. And analogous are three or more colors that are side by side on the color wheel. So it's like a color family. And so I would say this dog here now is pretty analogous. really want to capture the expression of the eyes so you guys can see how many times I've kind of gone back back and forth to those eyes they probably won't be completely done until the very end so I rarely kind of just finish a spot and, and call it done I tend to go back over things many many times gonna do a little more hatching here. Okay, so I want to get these ears going a bit. So one cool thing about using the Apple Pencil is on a brush like my fine tip brush or the peppermint pencil or smaller tipped anything, you can use the side of the pencil. So instead of having to switch back to my bigger gouache brush, I can get that kind of more painterly effect just by using the side. And I'm actually going to, at this point, merge my color layers because I have no reason to want to keep them on different layers at this point because I chose to kind of get rid of the, um, the background sketch. So I did that so that I can kind of clean up some of these edges a bit more. Okay, I want to make his ear go down a little bit. I kind of like this um, smudging, kind of painterly smudging effect that's happening up here. So I'm going to keep that. And I, oh, I said a while ago we were going to use the smudge tool. I forgot. So on the smudge tool, we're going to change it to, you can use, if you have my brush pack, you can use my gouache soft, soft brush. If you're using Procreate's gouache brush, change it to that. And um, I am just going to like very lightly, on a low opacity, just go in and things that I want to really soften up the edges. I'm just going to smudge them out. And I kind of mentioned a while ago and then I got distracted. I was going to do that with the nose. So I want to just kind of blend some of these colors together a bit more and then I also want to add a bit more pink to the tip of the nose and this is super fun to do guys I love working with color which is part of the reason why this new course exists is because I just have so much fun working with really bold vibrant colors it makes me happy it can instantly put me in a better mood to sit down and draw and um, and work with color in a really expressive way. So yeah, I wanted to just do something fun. And especially, you know, right now it's a difficult time period for everyone in the world. And, and what better way to kind of, I don't know, escape or or just immerse ourselves into something that makes us happy. Okay, so I'm again back up here doing more hatching. To me, the face is going to be the most important and then the body can be a bit more expressive with bigger brush strokes. But I really wanna make sure I have face looking the way that I want. Remember guys, constant tip for drawing animals. When you're hatching, do so in the direction of the fur. I mean, there are exceptions to that rule, but generally speaking, you want to kind of keep it a little natural and keep it flowing in the same direction as your source photo. Okay, 
Somehow my collar is still too low. <laughs> so I don't know. So uh, I might have to fix that later. Or I might just work with it. No one will ever know, right? Okay. So I am definitely going to tear myself away in a second and look at the comments here. So I'll just kind of keep this zoomed in. Um, ooh, Sketchy says good idea for a class. So maybe we can do a brush making class. If you guys are interested, let Sketchy know in the comments because maybe that's something we can do next. Oh, I'm glad uh, the combined down feature was useful for you guys. Yeah, I remember when I first figured out that one, I was like, mind blown, whole new world. Um, yeah, it, it was really, it's a really good feature to know. Betty asks, have you purchased any texture brushes from anyone, Lisa? Um, I... Hold on, guys. I have like all these notifications happening. Hopefully, is the broadcast still okay, guys? Sorry, I had all these notifications come up on screen. That's the problem with doing things live, right? Um, sorry, I haven't purchased any texture brushes. No, I uh, have experimented with, with making my own texture brushes. So actually, in that class that I mentioned to you guys, that drawing animals in Procreate class, um, we actually, now that I think of it, we make a brush in that class because I make a scale brush for the lizard because drawing like a thousand scales did not sound fun to me. So instead I taught people how to draw a few scales, copy and paste them and make them into a brush stamp. So we did that in the animal class. So um, yeah, I, I make my own texture brushes or you can do it from photography. So taking your own photos of texture and then incorporating or importing them into Procreate. Nakira knows tuna. Yeah, tuna. Tuna is a good one to follow if you don't follow tuna already. Ooh, a lot of people interested in brush making. Very cool. Okay. So I'm going to go back to Handsome Mick. Make sure I'm on the right layer here. I definitely want to make sure we have enough time today to get to everything I want to do. So how are we doing on time? 107. So I won't spend too much longer with this part. Let's just take a look at what we have and I'll show you guys another Procreate tip for proportion in one second. I just wanna fix a few little proportion-y things here. Okay, so let's say you're at this point in your painting and my dog's nose is looking a little long. So, what I'm going to show you guys is another cool trip trick <laughs> and it is using your liquify tool to adjust proportions. So you go to adjustments, you choose liquify, make sure you're on the push icon. You can select which mode you're in. I believe push is the default one usually. And you have to adjust the size of the brush and kind of play around with that, but you can always undo this. So mine's around 66% right now. And what I am doing is just dragging the muzzle. I can also move that eye there. I can make the brush smaller if I want to do more little subtle pushes. Whoops, I think I clicked off. And it's just a cool way to be able to very quickly make proportion adjustments. So I'm also moving, I want to move the eye again a little bit closer to the muzzle. And then if you go really wild with it and you're like, oh, I don't like what I've done, um, you can just reset. There's a reset button at the bottom here. 
make a big brush and I can move more or less. Some people might say it's a little cheatery, but I'm still, you know, looking at the proportions. I'm still the one making the decisions about proportion, but I'm just using a different tool to do it. Okay, so something like that. Again, I'm going to use my eraser to touch up any of the angles or anything that I want to touch up there. I can also do the same thing with the collar. Remember how I said I kept <laughs> putting the collar in the wrong spot? We could use liquify um, again to move that collar and adjust it. See how nice that tool is, guys? So useful. With a couple of clicks, you can just fix things up. Okay, so I want to um, go back to Handsome Mick. I want to use the turpentine brush. And have some fun with it. So it's very smudgy brush. And I'm using this like peachy color right now. I don't know why, but I really like it. Um, and I'm just going to use it to make some marks suggesting the fur. And I'm also going to use it up here. So you can use this brush and drag it around and it'll have a really smooth blendable texture or you can use this brush in a more kind of like jagged expressive way. Okay, hopefully Mick is still looking handsome. Whoops, I'm on my eraser. It's one thing with the new Apple Pencil, I don't know if it happens to you guys, but if you have your tap set to erase, which is a setting you can change, but if you double tap on it, do you see how it changes to eraser? If I double tap again, it changes brush. So it toggles between the two. You guys see that up at the top there? Um, cool feature. But somehow I, I don't know, because I started drawing in Procreate before the Apple Pencil even existed, I just have never gotten used to using it in that way. And I always just switch it like this. So I really have to train myself to use that feature. Cause, and then sometimes I accidentally click double tap and it defaults to my eraser tool, which can be annoying. That's the only negative. But I mean, if I really cared, you can change that in the settings. I don't know if that's just something that happens to me or if that's happened to you guys too. Okay, so continuing to do some kind of like mark making here. I want to grab that blue color and add more blue to the chest area. And the face. So again, this is like just using some abstract brush marks to suggest the fur, which I'm really liking actually. And then I'm going to make a new layer above everything and I'm going to call it fur. And this will be for the yellow fur. And it's kind of a greeny yellow too. So I'm gonna go with a really bright kind of crazy yellow. And if you want, you can keep using the turpentine brush or you might even want to switch to something even more bold like the oil paint brush, which should be right above it. And you might have to apply some pressure. And I might have to do an under and over layer because you can see how some of that goes under. So I might do another one here and call it for under because I'm so creative with my uh, naming conventions here. So 
this part will be underneath and then I'll have an over top one which I think will be helpful. And get kind of like a greeny bit that will be my shadows. Something like that. And then I'm going to take, go back to my bright yellow and smudge it in. Change the brush size. And again, I'm having fun with the brush. I am not trying to make it exactly like the photo. There's a fly annoying me right now. Okay. And I'm going to go to a really bright pink, maybe even make it a little brighter. And some of those edges we can kind of Kind of go over it with the pink color if you want. Go back in with the yellow. We don't want to smudge it too much though because I don't want to make orange. So you could do that on a different layer if you wanted to be really careful about it. But I think I can do it without blending it too much. Oops, that was a bad example. That blended it too much. And I'm going to go to a white, maybe make it more pure white. And this might have to be on a different layer too, but we'll see. So you might want to make a few layers. Um, you don't want it to blend. But I'm going to go to my fur under layer, get a white. Might just erase what's on that top layer there so I can see a little bit better. A trick I like to do too is turn your eraser to the same brush. So if I turn my eraser to the oil paint brush, I can go into what I've done and I actually might end up merging this down. Um, and it could have a really kind of cool effect on its own too. So you can kind of see some of the background kind of coming back. And then in this photo, I mean, there's some other kind of craziness going on. So um, I might just call this like back. Again, sorry about the naming. I'm not very creative <laughs> with my words, apparently. Um, so with back, I'm going to choose like a, a blue, dark blue blue gray and maybe just like make a little bit of a shadow there um, and then in terms of what we want to do for the actual background we could also do it on this same layer if we want so I think I want like a bit of white here so maybe like more in the pinky whites almost like a halo effect around the dog because we can see that on the wall there's a little bit of a, a blown out kind of effect and then I can grab that background pink color too and kind of blend this in so then handsome Mick has a bit of a halo beautiful and then we can add one step darker 
and put that around. Remember, this is a, on a background layer, so it's not interfering with the dog whatsoever. And then a really bold, if we want a few like little bold brush marks coming through, we could add that. But this brush does a beautiful job of blending itself, so it's a lot of fun to use. It feels like a wet mix for paint. So something like that. So it's looking pretty painterly and actually pretty cool. I'm getting excited about it. Um, I'm going to do a paint over layer. And this just might be a way of going over everything. And so I'm going to add a little more pops of pink in like that, just so that the yellow isn't all the way to the edges. And I also might add um, a bit of splattering to it as well. So I love adding paint splatter, digital paint splatter. So I'm just going to call this splatter. One thing that you guys can do is you can use spray paints and flicks for your splatter. So pick up a color that you've already placed down. And then I don't know why, but I always like doing it more with my, my finger than my Apple pencil, but you can grab that color and then put some flicks of paint in. And then anything that you don't like, go with your eraser and just, you know, undo it. And then this is also where I would probably add in um, my own watercolor brushes. So these are also available on my Etsy. Um, I use them a lot in my past lessons for 30 faces, 30 days. And so I made a bunch of custom watercolor stamps. And I would probably do this in the background. Um, so I'm going to do another layer called um, Splatter Under. And I can make it pretty big and just like, you know, just one tap kind of add that that crazy little element that maybe it needed. Um, and I'll go here and see if I can maybe add more splatter above. So I like to use it in like organic ways. So yeah, like something like that could be really cool. Um, I'll go back to paint over and just keep playing with this. So I might just go over that little spot. I didn't love it. So it's a lot of layering, as you guys can see. Um, I'm going back to the dog itself. And I want to define the, the back of the dog a little bit better than what I have so far. So I've taken a darker shade of purple. And so we started out, you know, with a complementary color scheme in mind. And I think we've still achieved that, but we've also added in some unexpected colors. And I really haven't done much with the collar at this point either. So I kind of want to just spend the last couple of minutes just adding a little bit of detail to it so it's not so boring. Um, I might not even do the, the heart. We'll see. That might be something I do later on. Um, so I'm just going to use that oil paintbrush and I'm just going to add a few different shades of color. If you guys have any final questions, if you want to ask them now, I'll take a look before we wrap things up. Um, but I do want to wrap things up pretty soon, I think. And just a reminder that you can sign up for the Color Fun class. If you've enjoyed this little tutorial, um, we do a lot of this kind of stuff in the new class. So Color Fun and Procreate, Portraits and Procreate Color Fun. And it's available right now in the Sketchy Shop. And for the month of August, um, you can join me here on YouTube. And we're going to keep doing live portraits like this for the entire month, every Wednesday at noon.
So I'm excited about that. And I really wanted to say thank you too for you guys joining me today. It's nice to have company while I draw. Okay, so I don't know guys, well, I'm not sure about this collar. If you guys have any good suggestions for the collar, I would love some. Maybe like some, like adding a bit more of the yellow could be kind of cool. It's just kind of boring right now. Maybe something like that. And I definitely would probably, whoops, I probably shouldn't do that on the collar layer. On the dog layer, I definitely um, would add probably a little bit more detail because Handsome Mick has amazing kind of striping in his fur. So I want to suggest some of those stripes. And I'm going to add yellow back into it because the dog himself is mostly kind of an analogous color scheme at the moment. So to make it a bit more complementary, I'm just going to go back in. And I mean, this is a portrait too, where I feel like at any point I could say, oh, this is done, or this is something I could work for hours more on. So you kind of sometimes have to decide when enough is enough with this kind of abstract portrait. Put a bit more blue, grab from that blue. I like that blue a lot. more blue in there. I also like to, um, like I said, move, change the smudge tool to something that has texture sometimes. So if we go to painting and go to turpentine, that brush we were using before for the fur, it could be a really cool last step because we can kind of just smudge out but still keep texture because oftentimes if you're using a smooth brush, with your smudging tool, you lose your texture. And I don't want to lose the texture on this dog. Okay, so I'm smudging this out. I'm also maybe even incorporating some new colors in and then taking the smudge tool and smudging those. Okay, so while I'm finishing up here, um, last questions, guys, that you might have that you're thinking of, something that maybe has stumped you or, or something that I've done today in the portrait that you're not quite sure of. Adding more white, too. I always feel like, you know, checking on how your highlights and your shadows are at the very end and, and seeing it with fresh eyes. So like zooming in and out and really paying attention to that is going to be helpful because what it looks like from far away is going to be a lot different than when you're really focused in on it up close. And I want to make sure it has that like punch that I know this portrait could definitely have because of the bold colors. So yeah, I'm going to zoom in and out a lot to see if I can achieve that. Okay, so let me leave it here for right now. And just taking a look at your questions here. So I'm just gonna switch over my camera just for a second here. Um,
Okay, so Sketchy also is offering a 30% off coupon code. So if you guys are interested in three or more classes, you could get 30% off with the coupon code ARTSY30. Um, and like I was saying before, the classes, you can do them at your own pace and you can sign up now and do them at any time. So they're available to you guys. Um, oh, Betty says she thinks he does have teeth in the picture. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I'll have to take a closer look at that for sure. And a bunch of people are interested in brushes, which is amazing, and making their own brushes. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, question, will this video be available later? Yes, Sketchy always posts the live streams later on, so you can come back. And if you want to draw along um, with me later, you could do that. Oh, and then one question, maybe I'll do this as a final little demo and question. Um, a good question is how do you do a color fill um, instead of manually painting the portrait? So um, if I were to do a color fill, so let's say I'm going to, I'm going to do it on a new layer, but let's say that I wanted to um, take one of these brushes. I'm going to take a brush though that is has some opacity to it. So let's say I wanted to, here, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Let's say I wanted to do a heart here. So I made my heart and I wanna fill it with this blue color. So instead of coloring it in, you can drag and drop it in. And there's something called color threshold. So if I keep my brush down, the threshold becomes either larger or smaller. And this is important because if you had something where, I mean, I did a pretty good job of closing in my edges. Oh, sorry, I just realized I'm not on the right camera. So you guys have no idea what I'm doing right now. Hold on, sorry, you're staring at me. Okay, so what I did was I took, um, I took a pencil and I drew this little heart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blue and drag and drop it in. And color threshold, you can see at the top, shows the amount of flood of a color. So you can see if I get to 90%, it floods it past my outlines. But if I go back, oh, the sweet spot is around 71% or lower, it will fill in that little heart that I created. So it's just a dragging and dropping. Um, so that's kind of cute, actually. I don't know, I could keep that maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but that's how you would fill a color. And that's just filling a tiny object, but you could obviously fill a full background that way. Um, so if you wanted to also, um, back here, if I wanted to create another background layer, let's say, uncheck that one that I'd already had, and I want to fill it in again, maybe with this blue, I can just drag and drop it in. And that actually is kind of a cool effect. It completely changes the look of that portrait. Okay, so that's how to kind of quickly fill in color. So thank you so much for joining me, Nano, Handsome Mick today. I really enjoyed drawing this portrait. Um, I'm gonna uncheck the little heart for now. I don't know, what do you guys think? Heart or no heart? Um, but it was a lot of fun to draw this little guy in an abstract, colorful, complimentary slash analogous color scheme. I really hope that if you haven't signed up already, you will sign up for the color fun class or maybe the animal class or mastering media or any of my Procreate classes um, so we can continue to paint together and Procreate. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a great day and I will see you same time, same place next week. Uh, on Wednesday. Okay, bye.